Lord of Flames here and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're going to watch Hinted Xperia's video called The Horror of SCP-106, The Old Man. Been a while, months, since I watched a SCP video, since I did that last one. But hey, back for another SCP, if I might do SCP gameplay. Anyways, let's get on with the reaction. Deep within the bowels of the SCP Foundation's various containment facilities across the globe are thousands of peculiar, often terrifying entities that no civilian should ever lay eyes on. For the good of humanity and for the good of their own individual sanity. Ooh, yeah. But most within the Foundation have come to terms with the strange beings they help contain. They may be odd, often terrifying in at, fact, but most can be contained with ease. SCP-106, the focus of today's video, is not uh, one of these entities. Whoa. Very few SCPs chill the bones of those privy to their existence as 106. Beyond the vile, abhorrent appearance of this thing, its behavior, characteristics, and origin are simply a mystery. A fact that terrifies those who are aware of its existence and chills them to their very core. How can one secure, contain, and protect others from that which they do not understand? SCP-106, nicknamed the Old Man, is a Keta-class entity. Yeah. A title that it earns thanks to how exceedingly difficult it is to contain due to the lack of understanding the Foundation has of both its physical and metaphysical properties. This one is very dangerous. We'll cover how the Foundation have managed to, at least, partially contain 106 shortly. Learning more about this SCP. SCP-106, the old man, bears a resemblance to an elderly humanoid, with a general appearance of advanced decomposition. Its skin appears to be rotting, so much so that the bone is showing in certain areas of the body. Although the level of decomposition may change based upon the entity's state, it appears to be one of its core properties present in all states. It is also able to scale vertical walls, even ceilings, and even can remain can suspended upside, upside down, down indefinitely, almost as if it's rotting into the surface to make itself stick. Thankfully, 106 appears mostly docile, it's not particularly agile and remains motionless for long periods of time while it waits for a victim. When attacking, it goes directly for the major organs, muscle groups, or tendons such as the Achilles heel in order to incapacitate its victim, which allows it to then pull disabled prey into its pocket dimension. Now, for obvious reasons, investigations into this pocket dimension Wait, have been rather limited, but based on what little dimension. the Foundation has managed to observe, it seems to be comprised mostly of halls and rooms. The hunting activity itself can continue for days, with some victims even being released from this pocket dimension for the sole purpose of being hunted, recaptured, and... SCP-106 causes an apparent corrosion effect in all solid matter that it comes into contact with, engaging a physical breakdown in its materials only a few seconds following contact. This breakdown is observed as rusting, rotting, and the cracking of materials, along with the creation of a black, mucus-like substance which appears similar to the material that coats SCP-106 itself. This effect is particularly detrimental to living tissue and is assumed to be something of a pre-digestion action. The corrosion effect continues for roughly six hours after contact, after which it appears to almost burn out. SCP-106 is also capable of passing through solid matter, leaving behind a large patch of its corrosive mucus. It can also vanish inside solid matter, during which it's assumed that it enters its pocket dimension, of which it appears to be able to exit from any point connected to its initial entry point. So, if it enters this dimension via an inner wall of a room, it can exit via any solid object that connects to the wall, the ceiling, the floor, a door, anything. Hmm. It's unknown if this dimension is where SCP-106 originated from, or if this dimension merely acts as the entity's lair. Looks like Silent Hill. 
I don't know. Special containment procedures. SCP-106 appears to be highly contagious in a rather non-conventional manner, and so no physical interaction with the entity is allowed at any time. If physical interaction must occur, however, then it must be approved by no less than two-thirds of the O5 command. Any interaction must be done in AR2 maximum security sites following an evacuation of all non-essential staff. All staff that remain on site must be at least 6 meters away from SCP 106's containment cell at all times, barring a breach event. SCP 106 should be contained in a sealed container comprised of lead lined steel. The container will be sealed with 40 layers of identical material, each layer separated by no less than 36 centimeters of empty space. Support struts should be placed randomly between the layers. The container itself should be suspended no less than 60 centimeters from any surface by ELO 2D electromagnetic supports. This ensures the cell has no physical connection to the rest of the site, inhibiting 106's ability to rapidly spread should a breach event occur. Outside of the primary containment housing should be a secondary containment area, comprised of 16 spherical cells, each filled with various fluids and a random assembly of surfaces and supports. It should also be fit with light systems, capable of flooding the entire assembly with no less than 80,000 lumens of light instantly, without the need for direct human involvement. Both containment areas should also remain under permanent 24-7 surveillance. Prior testing has shown SCP-106 appears to get confused when faced with complex or random structures, so these two radically different containment environments should either prevent its escape or at the very least, radically slow it down. 106 has also showed an aversion you know, to direct uh, sunlight, which causes it to, to go in, exit into its pocket to dimension, it, hence the it. need for 80,000 lumens of instant light. If any staff observe corrosion on any containment cell surfaces, on other staff members, or on site locations within 200 meters of SCP-106, they should report to site security immediately. Any objects or personnel lost to SCP-106 are to be deemed MIA or KIA, and under no circumstances should any recovery attempt be made. The containment procedure of SCP-106 is to be reviewed every three months or following a breach. It is extremely hard to contain. Physical restraints do nothing, and physical damage appears to have no effect whatsoever. No current damage, protocol huh? as of is basic observation and immediate response. More proactive special containment procedures have been recalled due to the events of breaches and behavior. Mm, let's learn about this behavior. The behavior of SCP-106 is odd. Its dormancy periods appear to last for upwards of three months, the cause of which is unknown, okay, but that, current theories that point toward that it being used as a lulling tactic. The entity will emerge from its dormancy in a highly agitated state, attacking and abducting staff and causing gross damage to its containment cell and also the site at large. Recall protocol. SCP-106 appears to hunt and attack purely based on desire, not hunger. It will attack and collect multiple prey during a hunting behavior event, keeping many alive in the pocket dimension for extended periods of time. It has no determinable limit and appears to collect a random number of prey during a an event. Fine addition to its my pocket dimension can only be accessed by the entity itself. Recording and transmission devices do still operate within although their recordings are severely degraded. In this dimension, 106 appears to play with its captured prey during hunting behavior, suggesting it experiences pleasure from the process. It also has full control of time, space, and perception within the dimension. Like, where does this new place coming from? It's like, is it somewhere around Earth, or is it from another universe? Who knows? In the unlikely event of SCP-106 breaching containment, 
A human between the ages of 10 and 25, its preferred age group for hunting, will be prepped for recall, while the compromised cell itself is replaced and restored for use. Once its cell is ready for use again, the human, its lure subject, will be injured, typically via the breakage of a long bone, such as the femur, or by the severing of a major tendon, such as the Achilles tendon, in order to inhibit movement. The subject will then be placed in the new cell, and the sounds they make transmitted over the site's public address system in order to beckon 106 back to its containment. Mm. Within 10 to 15 minutes of hearing the subject over the intercom, SCP-106 typically begins gravitating back towards it. If it doesn't respond to the initial broadcast, then additional physical trauma is administered to the subject at 20 minute intervals until the entity responds. Should the breach be deemed a major breach event, then multiple lure subjects can be used to amplify the luring effect. Once SCP-106 has finished with a lure subject, it that, typically right. re-enters the dormant okay. state. In addition, creepy. subjects may... However, subjects are not always killed during the hunting and luring process. Here, you can see an image of Agent... The agent was taken by SCP-106 into its pocket dimension and presumably hunted. After two hours missing within the dimension, the agent was released shortly after this image was captured. Now, to the shock of many, the agent was still alive for about an hour following what? their release. However, they did eventually pass. Oh my god. What caused this is entirely unknown. There is no way anyone survived to, to look like that, you know? No eyes or anything. No way. Mm -mm, no. Within the Foundation's archives are documents that refer to the young man, an allied corporal named Lawrence who served in the trenches young of man. France in World War One. Now, what? this entity is believed to be the genesis of SCP-106, so we'll conclude this video entry by taking a look at the documents. So this is the origins of the- Corporal Lawrence's trench mates always said that there was something off about him. He never spoke of anyone back home, he never received or sent any letters or anything, and would sleep talk about other trenchmates' family members, and then begin a muffled giggle. Nobody knew where he came from either, there were no station orders, no paperwork to explain his transfer, he just seemed to one day appear. It's like he just came to get him away from the rest like of the battalion, he world. and a number of other men were sent over no man's land to reconnoiter the German trench, and what they found turned their stomachs. The enemy trench was empty, dead silent. No Germans were seen, alive or dead, just weapons, ammunitions, and rations scattered across the ground. Expensive resources just gone to waste. What? The entire trench stank of mold and rot, and when they reached the barracks, they realized why. What remained of a German soldier had been spread out across the entire barracks floor like butter bones sticking out at random angles, and what remained of the skull resting on a bunk with finger bones crammed into the eye sockets and a rotting tongue stuffed in the back. Oh my god. Outside the barracks was a ring of hands sandbagged to a nasty. watch post, their fingers interlinked like a basket. There were two men in a tunnel, their skin as thin and leathery as a mummy, eye sockets empty and staring, mouths locked wide open and covered in a thick black oil. A black sludge coated the floor, the surface of which was covered in slick eyeballs with nerves and tendons fanning out like goldfish tails. But then, Corporal Lawrence found the hole. What? A four oh. foot wide cavity in a trench, empty and black. One of Lawrence's squad mates, Private Dixon, watched as Lawrence, all of a sudden, just slid face first into the hole, and he chased down after him to try and save him. Within the deep dark pit was the rustling sound of movement, an odd liquid shifting and a sudden upwelling of a repulsive stench. Dixon managed to climb back out of the hole, terrified and disturbed at what he'd seen and heard, and as his squad mates came to check on him, the pale, shivering face of Corporal Lawrence appeared from the black, and as he emerged, he began vomiting up a heavy stream of the same slime that also covered his body. Stunned at what they'd just witnessed, the men launched themselves back to their own trench, all total wrecks, all broken from what they had seen all but Corporal Lawrence. He had little to report about his time in the hole, but for some 
weird reason, his spirits were clearly up. He held a permanent, wide, giddy smile on his face. He began talking to other men more as well, but about strange things. About the joys of closed spaces, creation and destruction, what? human pleasures missed, and of the dimensions and ages. That's not cool. That's this not strange right. talk really unsettled the other men, but only made Lawrence's smile wider. One man awoke at night to find the corporal standing over his bunk, staring down at him with a wide grin and flat silver oh, eyes. Hell. That man was found dead the next day. Snarled in barbed wire, his intestines spread nearly ten feet around him in every direction. Not one man from that trench survived the war. Some died in battle, but a few days after, Private Dixon fell ill and died, and following his death, a strange, wasting sickness took over the trench. It seemed to eat away at the flesh, making it look oozing and blackened. Quickly after, Corporal Lawrence was moved to a French mental ward, where many of the same things repeated. He would quietly ramble to the other patients about endless halls, about pursuits in the dark, flesh laid out like pages of a book as his behaviour got more violent and more unsettling. There was a stale, musty foulness in the air wherever he went, and oftentimes he would just vanish for hours before randomly just reappearing as if nothing had happened. But then, one night, Corporal Lawrence vanished with 18 other men, and nothing remained of them besides a thick black ooze on the beds and walls that ate into the floor and, in a sunken depression beneath one of the beds, lay the teeth of every missing man, laid out in a tight, perfect spiral. The corporal, nor any of the men, were ever found. This disturbing mystery was buried by the countless other horrors that were spawned from the Great War, but regardless, similar stories continue to pop up. Stories of strange deaths, disappearing men being found days later, alive but broken and twisted beyond all comprehension. Stories of a strange dark figure stalking the bomb-riddled towns of Europe. Man, wars are terrifying, but this... This image is not only the only image in the document, but it's war? also the no. only known picture of Corporal Lawrence. It was taken in the Allied trenches several days after his return from the hole. That's him. That's the, that's the old man. 106. And so, that is the horror of SCP-106. The old man and the young man. Now, I know it's been a hot minute since my last SCP video, but I really wanted to get another one out before Infinite, and, you know, Halloween just seemed like the perfect time, so hopefully you enjoyed, and hopefully <laughs> this one was worth the wait. Yeah, this creeped so, me out, man. So, if you want to see more SCP... I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. If you want more, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. If you want more, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit down the and hit down the and hit that notification bell to see more. This is Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day.